Welcome to the Life Handmade Podcast. This is the show for paper crafters, and I'm your host today, Jessica Harrington. We have another friends episode today, and we are chatting with two fabulous and funny friends, Dana Joy and Pocono Pam. Welcome. Hey, Jess. Hello. How are you? Hi. Well, I just want to give a brief intro. Dana grew up in New Jersey and began crafting in 2000 and has been exploring new craft supplies ever since. And Pam was born in the Bronx, New York, and moved to the Pocono Mountains in 2008. She wanted to find a way to document special moments with her family and discovered crafting in 2009. We are excited to chat with them and learn more about their special friendship. But before we do, we wanted to share a recent podcast review for our Life Handmade podcast. We really do appreciate reviews from listeners like you, so please add one today. Kayla UCLA writes, I love listening to this podcast and hearing from some of my longtime favorite makers. Makes me excited about creating my own projects. Love it. Thank you for your review, Kaylee. And we think you'll be excited to hear from these two as well. All right, Dana and Pam, are you ready? I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) All right. First of all, that was a very brief intro. I want to know more details. So I want to hear more about how each of you got into crafting and how did what happened in your lives lead you into a more serious approach to your creative passions? So I've always been crafty. Even as a little kid, my grandmother did knitting. I could not knit. So I drew the cartoons that we saw in newspapers. She gave me a little journal and I was able to kind of document my lack of drawing in that book. And then once I found card making, that was everything. Every other craft fell by the wayside. And what year was that again? Uh, I started in 2000. Okay. So you've been at it for a while. Yes. Awesome. So you've seen a lot of the trends come and go and come back. I like seeing them coming back to be revisited again. Yes, especially doing it for, you know, two decades. Yeah. Like, I remember. So yeah. It's not new to you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. And what about you, Pam? Um, I always liked coloring when I was younger. So I would color. Um, we always had a great art program at school. So I learned different things like macrame and things like that. And also in camp, you always had arts and crafts at camp, right? But I really liked to color and I just enjoyed that. And then as an adult, how did that evolve into, I mean, you're more, you're a serious crafter now. So how did that evolve? Well, once I moved to the Poconos, I wanted to find a way to keep myself busy there. Right. And I always thought AC Moore was a paint store. I honestly didn't know. So I actually started, I took my very first scrapbooking class the day Michael Jackson died. So I was there in the classroom crying, but yet learning about embossing powder and all that other fun stuff. And I became hooked. Oh my goodness. Wow. Yeah, I too, AC Moore does sound like a paint store. And then (laughs) once you walk in, it's a whole other adventure for sure. So how did you guys meet? When, how, how did this friendship happen? Well, it started on a social media platform, Periscope. Okay. It's, that's not around anymore, right? It's not. It's not. Okay. So um, a friend of mine convinced me to start a channel on Periscope. And I did. And in the beginning, I didn't, you know, didn't have a lot of followers, didn't really know what I was doing. But I just liked talking with people, interacting with them. And Pam joined one of um, the lives I was doing. And it was like, instantaneously, I was like, yeah, we're going to be friends forever. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that's exactly how it started. <laughs> and what year was this? This was in 2016. Okay. 16, late 15, early 16, I believe it was. That's the friendship equivalent of finding your spouse on a dating app, right? <laughs> like you, <laughs> yes. You found each dating other. app, friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your current like <laughs> trendy social media internet friends, but now of course I know your friends in real life too. Right, right. Yes. 
Awesome. Mm. Well, okay. I really want to dive into both of your work with Hero Arts. Just let's tell our fans who have not heard about this or don't know your involvement. Let's let's dive into that. Okay. So, um, but the events that happened last year, mainly around race relations, is how it brought us together. Pam and I have been fans of Hero Arts forever. Um, the last year was pretty difficult. A lot of the things we were seeing on TV were um, difficult. And we felt um, our presence in the craft community had been missed or overlooked. So um, we had an encounter to talk to Aaron about, you know, what we saw, what we were uncomfortable with, how we wanted our voices to be heard in the community. Um, it was a very eye-opening experience um, for Pope Pam and I. It can, for myself, I just started crying because yeah. it was just such a um, powerful and depth conversation. And Aaron and Laura are probably the sweetest human beings I have ever met. They have real compassion, just not for like crafters, just for anybody, you know, social injustice. Um, if you're being treated differently because of the way you look, because how you present. Um, Partner with them has been one of the highlights that I can say has allowed me to have a voice in this community. Awesome. Pam, thoughts on this new venture with Hero Arts and, and you're falling into that? Oh, Jess, the very first stamps I bought at AC Moore, and I still have them, were all Hero Art stamps. So to be part of this with them and to be included, like at, literally at the table, mm -hmm. was amazing. It was just so surreal. Um, but it was an, an, at an important time, and they knew it. Our community knew, knew it, and mm -hmm. we need it. We need it. We need to be seen, heard. So it was very important. Of, of all the the people and the brands that you were able to as you said get on the get at the same table with I am thankful that it was hero arts they're widely respected in the industry Aaron is known as you know a great guy and I'm so glad that you guys were able to do that with hero arts they're really good friends of ours as well very special so what do you hope that people get out of maybe the, those products specifically but also the projects that you share, your online presence is now, like you, you both have some followers. Tell me about that. I want people of color, minorities, to see their self in crafting. This is an industry that, you know, I can easily go to an event and my, maybe see a handful of minorities at an event. I want them to feel their presence, that they now have products that look like them, that um, look like their grandbabies. Um, and how we can mend the bridges, especially if somebody is not aware of how um, minorities are treated or they don't understand or they don't have the compassion or empathy for it. This kind of gives us the opportunity to let their voices be heard. Like we love having feedback. Um, we want to make sure that what we produce is relevant, but just, and I, I need to be specific on this, just not to African Americans, just not to my right. minorities. I have friends who have biracial grandbabies and they would never could have a card or an image that looked like their grandbaby. So now, you know, we get to embrace all of that with, mm -hmm. uh, with this crafting community. So we want it to be a pathway to something new, something exciting, but also opportunity to learn from that excitement. Both. Wow. Yeah, that's great. And Pam, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts were when my granddaughter saw um, Kids United um, from Hero Arts, she immediately giggled and said, oh my gosh, she looks like me. And that's what I want all children to see themselves in the images that are part of the Unity collection mm -hmm. and be able to resonate with that and, then, and and make sure that they are represented in anything that they do. For those fans listening that would like to see more about that Unity collection, we will link that in the show notes. So um, I want to know a little bit more about your crafting style specifically. You both are, you know, 
gaining your fame as crafters. And I want to know how you fell into your style. Is your style still evolving? Do you have a certain style? What do you think? I probably lean more towards clean and simple. Um, when I first started in this, I had to have like all the designer paper, you know, all of that. Now, granted, I still have a lot of that. Um, but I think my style just evolves because I don't like to kind of be put in a box of I'm just this type of crafter. So I like to use different mediums, different design layouts. Um, I like to sketch a lot of what my card concept's going to look like. Um, so I think I'm like clean and simple with a little bit, you know, of sassiness off to the side, sprinkled on top. <laughs> Sassy sprinkled on top. A little sassy <laughs> So do you only do card making? Do you dabble in other crafts, Dana? I have tried to dabble in mixed media and it scares me. There's just a lot to mixed media, in my opinion. And my brain doesn't function that way. Um, but I have took up um, cross stitching again okay, and stitching. And that has been something I've fallen back in love with because it doesn't require me to be in my room to do it. Mm -hmm. I don't have to sketch anything out. Um, you know, I can go sit on the couch and watch a football game, you know, and do this. Be with your um, family. Yeah. So it kind of gives me that downtime and just that repetitive nature of just doing one thing over and over and over again. Um, so yeah, that's something I've totally picked up and fallen back in love with. Awesome. Yeah. I love that therapeutic nature that, yes. that, that comes from doing something with your hand, whatever it is. Yep. yep. One of my favorite things, I feel like it's akin to before and afters in um, like home remodeling, is seeing a sketch and then seeing the final card. Would you mind after the show if we um, were able to get some of your sketches and then what the card turned into so we could add it to our show notes? Sure, absolutely. Okay. It's like my favorite thing. I love <laughs> seeing it. It's like, oh, I love it. Okay. Well, Pam, what about you? So... I started off initially on scrapbook.com because I, and if you go to my gallery, you could see how I started off. I came a long, long way, Jess. So I thought I wanted to do scrapbooking. Then I fell, I discovered um, Copics, Copic markers. And then I said, yep, I'm still, I still like to color. I still like to color. So I'm going to color. Um, so I found different images to color and like said, um, Dana on Periscope, she had an image of a bow um, yeah. that she enabled me to buy and I colored the bow. She colored this bow everywhere. She colored the, she was always coloring the bow. And then I wanted some of the images, I wanted them to look more like myself or my children or my friends. So I started putting Afros on every image that I cut. <laughs> And then it just really changed that you can get really bang for your buck. Like, right. You can take an image, you spend the money on it, do what you want with it. You put mm -hmm. Afro, Afro puffs and people were enjoying it. So, and I just kept going. So I'll put Afro on anything, frogs, squirrels, you name it. I'm going to just, Afro add, just add yeah. Adam. I love Afro, it. Girl. Make yeah. it your own. Yeah. I yeah. Love it. So now what do you see you do the most of? Is it cards specifically or do you still do scrapbook layouts? Oh, Jess. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll be honest. I struggle with what I think is clean and simple is just a whole hot mess. Right? Oh, so, <laughs> to I'm each not, their I own. Dana, I go to Dana. <laughs> I can color all day long. Okay. And then when I have to assemble a card, I'm like, ooh. <laughs> And so I go to Dana for guidance. <laughs> oh, I am learning, but try to keep it clean and simple. And I, and I like layers. Okay. And, and I'll throw enamel dots. You'll see everything has an enamel dot on it. <laughs> Afros and enamel dots. Okay. Those are your two go-tos. You know, you like the components of. I like yes. that. You're like, put do something with this. Yes. <laughs> what? You just like the doing, which is the important part. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Well, we kind of touched on this because my next question was what, and this could be a little bit different because I heard the enamel dots and then throw an Afro on it, but <laughs> what are your go-to or cannot live without products right now? Because I'm not going to hold oh. you to this because this changes. Mm -hmm. All right, Dana. Uh, that would probably be glitter pens. I love a good glitter pen because um, I got to add sparkle to something. Um, 
I am using a lot of gems to fill okay. in spaces on cards. Um, and I love watercoloring. That's something I have been trying to engage myself in a lot. Like I've purchased classes, I haven't finished them, but I've purchased them. Um, but I like stencil. So my go-to in my room is a stencil, a paint palette, a glitter pen, and some gems. Okay. You're gonna see something of that on a card. There, choose one, any one. Okay, yeah. all right. And then Pam. I love me some enamel dots. Like Hero Arts has the best enamel dots. I'll just <laughs> throw them on every card. So we already <laughs> mentioned that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Peel and stick. <laughs> yep, it's peel and stick. Um, and they come in so many colors, right? And, and they, sizes. Yeah, yes. and sizes. So um, I love playing with the water brush pens with the ink, okay. the reactive inks. I like that. And like the little, the spritz spray, sprays mm -hmm. uh, make everything glittery. It just, just adds life to it, a little depth. Mm -hmm. Do you, Pam, find yourself free drawing or do you normally stamp and then color into the stamp? All right, Jess, I really can't draw, but Procreate <laughs> makes me look, uh, do you know that app, Procreate? Um, I, <laughs> that makes me look awesome. Okay, um, good to know. I cannot free draw. <laughs> A magician should not reveal their secret. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> well, there you go. Cat's out of the bag. With that one. But I love to play on Procreate as well. Okay. Um, yeah. Awesome. So, <laughs> I the, One of my favorite questions to ask on any podcast, because it can go so many different directions, are the meaningful handmade creations. So I want to give you guys both the chance to answer both sets of questions. So I want to know what is the most meaningful handmade project or creation that you have created? Maybe you still have it. More than likely it was given or gifted to someone. I really want to share that with our listeners. Mine was a quilt I had done for my grandmother. Um, I gave a square to each family member and I had them design something to put on it. So I gave them puffy paint, I gave them regular paint, I told them you can put stickers on it. Um, so there was 17 of us, I believe, in total back then. So I had each person have own a square and to design that square. So ironically, my square was a credit card, you know, because I'm all about spending money. So it was a credit card because my grandmother helped me get my first credit card. So mine oh. was a visa, um, like puffied out paint visa card. Um, and I had that stitched together by one of my mom's friend and we ended up giving to her for a Christmas present. Um, she passed away two years ago. However, mm -hmm. I now have that quilt back. So it is something that um, my kids are aware of. Uh, new grandbabies, great grandbabies are aware of them. So that is something that I'm, I'm going to make sure it gets passed down to generation to generation because that we used to call her Gigi. That was Gigi's quote. So it would be passed down to generations. I love that. And it will be continued to be passed down. Very And special. I will probably pass down the debt of my visa card too. Okay. <laughs> Very important. And then Pam, what was yours? Um, I... My daughter had a destination wedding and I wanted to make something special for her so that on her wedding day, her and her husband would be able to have it. So I found a wooden heart. It's still then at AC Moore and they both attended Penn State and I made this really beautiful heart um, with the lion on it and their names and we were married at and it was really, really pretty. It was, it was and they still have it to this day hanging in their home. So awesome. that was special to me. Yeah. Were you able to take it in the suitcase? Was it small enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. So yeah. you were able to present it. Yes. Oh, yes. wonderful. Yes. Okay. So now the opposite of that question, what is the most meaningful handmade creation that you have received from someone else? I received mine um, back in 2015, I believe it was. My dad, um, unfortunately had dementia and uh his therapist used art for him so he ended up um just making a piece of art 
And when, um, right before he passed away, I was given that. And it was actually has my dad's uh, signature on the bottom of it. So that's something that has been framed and put into my space. Because I, I used to have like this ongoing joke about craft supplies with my dad because he had came to my house and saw the rooms and he was just like if this makes you happy you know always connect to that so it was mm -hmm. like my dad knew or some kind of way visualized him making that artwork would know that i would always stay connected mm -hmm. so yeah it's um sitting right up there over my shoulder in my room had your dad ever done art before or was absolutely this only not. wow yep, he, was, he started out as a police officer and then he became a construction worker and his hobby was golfing, but he, he never did art. So that it's extremely meaningful to me. What a special gift. I, I wonder if, or I hope that the therapist knows what they're able to give to the ones left behind. You know what absolutely, I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. That's very special. Oh, that's awesome. And Pam? Well, just honestly, anything that my children have ever, ever made me, <laughs> <laughs> those anything are, those are the gifts like I still have little books that they've made in kindergarten or things in high school painting so I treasure those I really do so you're a yeah. keeper and collector yes mm -hmm. have any of them come back and asked for any items back for any reason or to look at them or are they just your special items they do like to look at them um but they're mine for now they're mine for now <laughs> like, <laughs> For now. I think and I'll then, of course, your grandchildren, too, right? right? There we go. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So this is the fun portion. I don't know. Okay. So it's going to be like the newlywed game, but okay. it's, of course, friendship style, you know, because, okay. you know, dating app, Periscope, all the things. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be kind of like a lightning round. Mm -hmm. And I want to see how well you guys know each other, okay? Or okay. like what you think of each other. Oh. All right. Here we go. <laughs> Who spends more money on craft supplies? Dana. I would say both of us. Oh. I would say both of us. <laughs> we spend it in different places, but I think it's both of us. Pam? I Pam, do you agree? The, just a little bit. Is my husband going to listen to this? If, I don't know. Chris, if you listen to this, it's Dana. <laughs> Just, yeah, just, just deflect, deflect. Good. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Okay. What is uh, your coffee shop order? Do you know each other's go-to coffee or, or coffee shop drink? Pam's is Starbucks caramel okay. macchiato with soy. Hot? Hot. Okay. She's absolutely right. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Dana is Dunkin' Donuts with some sort of chocolate donut with lots of sprinkles. Oh, there's no drink involved? Uh, yeah, the coffee, the uh, coffee light and sweet with a donut on top. Yes, <laughs> yes. There's, there's donuts involved. There are donuts involved. Yeah. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts coffee order is never just coffee. It's okay. Dunkin' Donuts, light and sweet, chocolate frosted donut with sprinkles. Ooh. Yeah, that's the coffee order always. Okay, okay. <laughs> Good to know. You definitely knew each other's order. Okay. All right. Um, current or favorite binge default show on on a streaming like Netflix? You ready, Pam? Because we already know this one. Ready? Uh -huh. Hamilton. Hamilton. Oh yes. Okay. We are Hamilton, Hamilton. junkies. Both. So it's the same question, same answer for both. Yes. Yep, same answer. Okay. Good. Easy yes. peasy. All right. Who has the better voice for singing? <laughs> I'm gonna say Pam. Oh. And I'll say. Look at your humility. I love this. <laughs> I will sing quietly to myself in my room. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Who's mm -hmm. the car singer in the car? Oh, I'll um, sing in the car. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll sing in the car, Jess. <laughs> Pam will take it. She's yeah. like, I will take, take that. I'm the DJ. She can yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's more likely to continue to perfect again and again and change and keep changing their current crafting projects? Oh. Dana Joy. Yeah. 
it, it might be you're me. a dabbler you just keep it's never done yeah like sometimes i just have to put it aside and come back to it because i feel like if i keep working on it i'm, I'm going to ruin it so i would tell pam like i gotta just set this aside for right now. walk away mm-hmm. just don't walk away <laughs> so i can see it in a new light when i come back that you is know? true yeah. that is very true and then who is the first to start dancing at a party <laughs> It's just going to be both of us. We have no shame. It's both of us. We would dance in grocery stores. Yeah. We oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. no. Okay. You're troubled together. I can just, yeah. I'm glad I'm, you're, you're separate right now. Yeah. Like <laughs> Who's more likely to lose their phone? Mm. Mm-hmm. That's a good question because we kind of keep up with our phones. Okay. Yeah. It's attached. All right. Yeah. Pretty risk. You're responsible. Yeah. Adults. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Who's more likely to be a Fortune 500 CEO? Oh, that would be Pam. Yeah. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Take it. All right. Yeah. I will take that. All right. Mm-hmm. And then l- l- the last question. Who is more likely to injure themselves while crafting? <laughs> That's going to be Pam. <laughs> but she's also a CEO. So yeah, it's okay. well, she's a clumsy CEO. <laughs> I'm so clumsy. <laughs> I'm gonna pick her up off the floor. <laughs> okay, all right. And then you can both just start dancing. Yes, just start dancing. <laughs> You guys, this has been so much fun and I'm so excited for our listeners to learn more about you and we will list all the places that they can find you and stalk you and and hang out with you on social media in the show notes. Yes. Awesome. It's been a great time. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you, Jess. Thank you. What a fun time today. Thank you both for joining us. If you want to know more about the items and all of the things we talked about today in the podcast and how to connect with Pam and Dana, visit those show notes at scrapbook.com forward slash podcast. And remember, consider leaving us a review. It'll help other crafters like you to find it. And you may just be featured in a future episode like Nick's Mom 96, who writes, all my favorites in the industry, five stars. I have very much enjoyed this podcast. All my favorites in the industry provide their thoughts and expertise. I love the variety of speakers and topics. Thank you, Nick's mom. You can also shop scrapbook.com where you can find over 40,000 unique items and it is the number one online store for paper crafters. When you shop here, you'll enjoy award-winning customer service, great prices, a huge selection of products, and super fast shipping. You'll also benefit from nearly 200,000 real product reviews from crafters like you. You'll find endless inspiration and meaningful connection in the scrapbook.com forums and galleries. And remember, you can sign up to take a free online class in our classes platform as well. Be sure to subscribe to the Life Handmade podcast in your favorite app and enjoy our other episodes there as well. Happiness is Life Handmade. I drive doodles of eccentric faces in the margin spaces of importance.